We recently made the switch from Sailor for our internet to Starlink. Now, I was always a big fan of Starlink. I just wanted to wait until it was a little bit more robust, and that seems that time is now. They have a ton of satellites, in fact, always launching satellites. A lot of people think they're seeing UFOs up in the sky, but it's actually Starlink we're launching even more satellites. Now then, that's going to give you the opportunity to not necessarily get, you know, locked out of your Starlink if you have the roam, if you're in an area where there is a lot of other Starlink users because now it seems there's plenty of bandwidth. Now then in this video I want to show you how we power our Starlink Mini. I chose the Mini for several reasons over the standard um, and now is a great time to get it. They just lowered the price um, by about $150, $200, something like that. So if you haven't gotten your Starlink Mini, definitely do that. It's an all-in-one. It means it's got the router inside. It can be powered by DC, which is some, what I'm going to show you how I, I do that. So several ways that I can power my Starlink even going down the road. Um, all kinds of great stuff. And so this is a fantastic tool for our viewers, for anybody who's mobile. It's going to give you just really high broadband in the middle of nowhere. We're in Glacier National Park right now. And my AT&T service is not very good, so I'm very thankful that we have Starlink. Now then, I'm not going to go into all of the pros and cons of Starlink. I think that most uh, uh, people understand that it is uh, basically internet that you can have anywhere in the world. Um, and now it's, it's just super accessible to just about everybody. And so all of the links to these products, I'm going to show you how we power our Starlink, uh, the, the cage that I use for it, where I can attach it to the top of my truck, all kinds of things. I'm going to put all of those links in the description below, so be sure you check those out. Also, so if you get a Starlink using the referral code down below, you will get one free month of service when you purchase your Starlink. Now then, let's get into a couple of things about how I power my Starlink uh, using DC power. Okay, let's talk about powering the Starlink Mini. And this is, again, one of the reasons that I really like the Mini over the, uh, the larger, the residential, or the, uh, the standard size. One, it is so much smaller, so much more compact as just one piece, right? One piece and a wire and whatever you're going to plug into. So then they do give you the AC adapter where you can plug that in. And so here in the uh, Airstream, I mean, I do have the battery power to be able to power this and basically indefinitely off of my inverter if I want to do that, but that's a little more difficult. I don't have to do that. So I'm going to show you here in a second how I power it from the Airstream, uh, which is super easy and it'll, like I said, basically indefinitely with my solar and, and the large battery bank I have. Now then, but a couple of ways that I like to power it if we're not necessarily right by the airstream or something is with one of these little guys right here i've actually got two of them this actually came with a little travel refrigerator but it actually works perfect now then for this one i did have to i do have to use the same cigarette lighter adapter that i used to plug it into this guy the big airstream um, but this one right here actually goes with USB-C. And so this is uh, the USB-C. I got this from Starlink. Uh, so that plugs into the Starlink. And there's USB-C. Can't be just any USB-C. Not sure if you can see on there or not, but this one has two. One has a 20 watt maximum output. That won't work because the Starlink needs about 30 watts. But the top one here has 100 watts out. So plenty of power. And this little guy right here has 260 watt hours. So simply just do the math. I think that's gonna equal out to right about nine hours of Sterling usage that this will power. Now then I did a little run, a little test. I carry a 100 watt portable solar panel with me. Uh, I plug that in to um, actually this guy and my solar into this 
and I was getting more solar than the than the Starlink was using. So with that, I mean, basically indefinitely, as long as you got sun, right? So then let's go over to the Airstream and show you how I power my Starlink. It's all external. I don't have to run a wire in and out of my Airstream. It's all external. And this is something that you can do too. It might be a little more difficult if you have your batteries in your actual battery box. I don't. All of my batteries are inside the Airstream. Uh, but I think that you could do this as well if you had external batteries. Okay, here's my Starlink in its trio cage. And as you can see, it's a little bit away from the Airstream. I couldn't put it on the propane cover this time just because Starlink wanted to be pointed over there. And I could not have the Starlink pointing there on top of the propane. So as you can see, I've got a special cord that I got on Amazon right here. It is 16 feet and it runs over to what was the battery box, which is now a cargo tray for me. Um, because with my battery upgrade, this no longer is a battery box. It's now a cargo tray, but my expert installer, Graham Carr, he gave me an access point right there. As you can see, those alligator clips goes to the socket in which this 16 foot cable with a cigarette lighter adapter with enough power to power the Starlink. Remember, it needs 30 watts at least. Um, to an ordered power goes right in there and so my Starlink is being powered by my 920 amp hours of battery and solar basically making it a uh, you know I could power it indefinitely basically right and so that is the way I don't have to run I do not have to run any wires through any of my windows up through any of the underneath and the roof nothing i am able to power this right there with those access points now then you're not going to necessarily have those access points and so but i do think if your batteries were in there you could definitely attach it right to the positive and negative posts on your battery that are in the battery box and have the same result now then typically i would have ran this through there but i had already hooked it up and the end that goes in there is the small end that would fit through there and i didn't do that but this little guy right here prevents the the lid from crushing it and that is from the air gear store this is how i fill up in my air in my spare tire you see there is the the um the nozzle there and then it goes right underneath and that's where my spare tire is. I don't have to crawl under there, and that's the Air Gear Store. I'll put a link to that as well. That's a fantastic feature, so love that thing. Anyway, that is how I power my Starlink on my Airstream. So one of the things I want to talk about as well is what I call my cage around my Starlink or what the company Trio Flat Mounts calls a speed mount. Now this is just a really hard plastic, uh, basically a cage that goes around your Starlink that allows you to put on either magnets or suction cups to basically put your Starlink anywhere. Now what I do is I put the magnets on the bottom of this and I attach it to the top of my Yakima cargo box that I have on the back of my truck. This allows us to have Starlink going down the road, which came in super handy yesterday, going through the mountains of Montana. We had zero cellular coverage, but we had like 200 megabits of internet going down the road with the Starlink. Yes, Starlink does allow you to use this in motion. It's really amazing. Starlink is, I mean, it's a miracle to me. Um, but this cage also gives you a couple of other different advantages that i found last week while we were in yellowstone i had set the starlink on top of my propane tank um, and it was raining it was really terrible weather for yellowstone it was raining windy all of those things but that little cage that speed mount gives the starlink a little bit more heft the mini is really light you know and so wind could blow it over especially if it was because it was up high on my on my propane uh tank holder um and so 
it never budged it rained it snowed it was windy so it never budged and so that's another great benefit and so uh they did send me the 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 cage for free um it's actually a friend of a friend who owns the company they reached out to me um and so i think it's a, a fantastic product and that link will be down in the description down below i do highly recommend some sort of a what they call a speed mount magnets suction cups whatever it may be to use on your vehicle now on my ford truck it's an aluminum body so the magnets would not stick and so they do give you two metal uh, uh little pucks that i attach to my yakima carrier using the 3m super adhesive tape and i was going 70 miles down the road thing never budged and so highly recommend getting some sort of a speed mount for your starlink Okay, that wraps it up. I don't know if you use Starlink or not, but if you do, these are some helpful tips I think could help you power your Starlink that will help you uh, mount it easily to a vehicle or to whatever you want and give it that little extra heft so the wind doesn't blow it away. Now then, all of these links are down below. So if this is your first time on the channel or you've yet to subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also hit the old thumbs up, the notification bell, all of those things. Really appreciate it. Helps the channel. And so if you're interested in RVing, outdoor, whatever it may be, uh, then this is the channel for you. So anyway, we will see you next time.